Well, um, it has been an unprecedented year. Crazy. With all the, the... This stuff? Yeah. It's unprecedented how many times we've actually heard the word unprecedented. <laughs> Our dream vacation was canceled. You got to keep the job you don't like. You know they can see you? But let me tell you all the no's, friends. Um, no going to restaurants, no movie theaters, no movie theater popcorn, no state parks, no going to athletic events, no church services, and no... Don't say it. Don't. Hey, kids! You've got to be more careful with the toilet paper! This is all we have! All the drive-by birthday parties, graduations, <laughs> baby showers. I will say this, I thought it was a little awkward throwing out that baby shower gift into the front yard. You weren't supposed to do that. It just feels like a wasted year. I said it, I said it. Yeah, there's just all the time at home. Boom! And all the time that we were made to spend together. Hey, honey! All the heart to hearts. Mm. Goodness. Speaking of hearts, our son Jason right over there said yes to Jesus. All right, that kitchen table. July 17th, 2020. You know, I guess it's not really wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. <laughs> I think I have the answer to what I'm thankful for. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Everything. Everything. Good evening. It is so good to be able to join with you again tonight on this Monday evening. Just a few announcements that I'd like, like to share with you as we get started tonight. Uh, I want to share with you that we will continue these through the month of November as we're kind of in the middle of that month and then we will switch gears after November and in December we're going to continue on with these devotionals uh, but they will switch over to a more Advent slash Christmas kind of theme. So I encourage you to continue to watch and share and tune in as as you are able for these devotionals. So good evening, everybody. My name is Pastor Adam Miller. I'm the pasta, pastor of Catawissa Parish, which is uh, RCV Church and Cult Church. So tonight we're going to continue on in our Thanksgiving devotional. And tonight is one of my favorite scriptures when we start talking about Thanksgiving. Uh, this is a favorite scripture of mine uh, above all uh, for this kind of remembrance of the thankfulness that we have in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So the scripture tonight, I want to get right to it is Psalm 100, Psalm 100 verses 1 through 5, and it says this, Shout for joy to the earth, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now this scripture from Psalm 100 just speaks to me about a joyful heart, that the psalmist is full of thanksgiving and praise and worship of how God is at work in their lives and how God is at work in our individual lives as well. Hear that. Shout to the shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. That sounds convincing to me. It doesn't say mumble it. It doesn't say you're just going to say it real quiet like, but it says shout it. Shout it with praise and joy because the Lord is the Lord. 
Worship him with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Sometimes on Sunday mornings, it can seem like, boy, I wish church would start a little later, or I've got other things I need to do, or, oh, the preacher's going to drone on and on forever. And we sometimes can come to church mumbling and grumbling and, and heavy with things that are on our hearts and are going on in our lives. And the last thing we need to do is, is to take this time apart. But the psalmist reminds us that we need to humble ourselves before the feet of Christ. We need to know that the Lord is God. It says that in verse 3 at the start of it. And I think that is so important for us. I find this in my own faith journey as well. I'm sure you do as well. Sometimes we like to put God in a box. That God is able to only do certain things or only able to act in certain ways in certain circumstances. But the Lord is God. God is the one that created us. We didn't create God. And since God is God and we are his creation, we should be shouting for joy and thanksgiving for the ways that he is at work in our lives, offering us the good news and the hope of Jesus Christ. What's also really important in that verse 3 of Psalm 100, it reminds us that we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, that we follow our good shepherd named Christ. It is not us who dictate what God does. That is a reminder for us in the middle of a pandemic. It's a reminder for us in our lives anytime we feel that things are outside of our control, that we feel helpless in a situation. We are reminded and humbled constantly by scriptures and the truth that God is the one who will guide us. We will go through trials in this lifetime. There will be difficult moments and seasons. There will be times where we feel like we have gone through hell itself. But God reminds us over and over again that he will care for us, that he will lead us, that even when we go through difficult circumstances, he is the one who will guide us through it. We must rely on him. We, we the people, we God's creation must rely on God and keep our faith and trust in him. The psalmist goes on in verse 4 with, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. How many more times does the psalmist have to say it in these opening verses of Psalm 100 as this reminder that we need to constantly be going before God for praise, to celebrate that he is our Savior and Lord, that we are his creation, that he loves each of us so much. Hear that again. Jesus loves each of us so much. And because he loves us so much, he is constantly at work in our lives, using us for his glory and for his honor. Verse 5 reminds us that the Lord is good. His love endures forever. Notice that. God's love endures forever. People may pass, love for objects might pass, all of the uh, demands and loves that we might find that the world tells us are around us uh, are all just temptations, but they do not last. But God's love does. It endures forever. Even when we pass away from this earth, God's love remains steadfast in our lives. That, that is something that we can be thankful about. It is something that we can give thanks and joy to God that he is at work in our very lives, that he is using us, that he is shepherding us and guiding us, and we are to enter his gates, to enter this sanctuary, to enter into worship and prayer time and devotional time with praise and thanksgiving. Not a... I got to go do this again because God says so. No, but to do it with joy, with enthusiasm. We are the living body of Christ and we need to live and conduct ourselves that we are not half dead, that we are not falling asleep, but that we are alive and enthused about what God has done through Jesus Christ, what God continues to do through the power of his Holy Spirit and how God is guiding us even in this strange and unusual time and season. God continues to lead us as his people. Brothers and sisters, how are we showing to the world around us that we serve Christ, the risen Christ, the alive Christ? Are we entering his gates with thanksgiving and praise? 
So as Thanksgiving comes closer and closer, I want you to just uh, post in the comments. I want to invite you to post in the comments any ways that you feel uh, that you can offer praise to God, or let's put that a little bit better way, Adam. Uh, offer how we can offer to God uh, things that you are are thankful for or praising God about. Uh, so it could be that you have a home, that you've been protected from these wind and rainstorms that we've been having, um, that you have your health, that we we are able to worship together freely. Any of those things, name them up in the comments, the ways that we can praise God for what he does in our lives. Even make it as simple as possible that you are alive today, that you're able to watch this in this moment. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be fancy, but we should be constantly lifting up to God praises and being thankful for the work God does in our lives. That's the challenge that we greet each and every day. Will we be grateful and thanking God and praising him for what is going on in our lives? Or do we wake up in the morning and just have an attitude of it's not right, it's not fair, it isn't going my way? So often it is easy. I know there are mornings uh, during this pandemic where I've woken up and just thought, ugh, Another day of this, another day, kind of like the movie Groundhog Day, you just wake up and it's just repeat over and over again. But it's in those moments that we need even more the attitude of prayer, thanking God for what we do have, praising him and thanking him for all the ways that he's at work in our lives, and then readjusting our attitudes that we can go out to serve Christ as our Lord and Savior with praise and thanksgiving for we are the sheep of his pasture. I want to encourage you to adapt a joyful heart of prayer, a joyful heart of living. And I want to challenge you, and I want to challenge myself in this, uh, just right along with you. But every time negativity starts to creep in or anxiety starts to get the best of us, I want us to pause in that moment, remember these words from Psalm 100, and then give thanks to God and be joyful to adopt an attitude of being joyful and thankful and praiseworthy to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That, that is a challenge all in itself, but I know that it's a challenge that we can do. I know that it is a challenge that we are able to do. So I want to close us with a word of prayer. If you have prayer concerns tonight, I encourage you to type them into the news feed as well so we can share them together as a community. And then I'll just close us out with a, a few closing thoughts. So let's pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you and praise to you. For you are our Savior. You love each of us so much, regardless of our past, regardless of all of the things that we have said or done before that have harmed you or our relationship with you. God, we ask for forgiveness and we thank you that you offer it. God, we ask for your grace in this evening and in the new day that lies ahead tomorrow, that whatever we may do or say, it will be pleasing and honorable to you, that we would give you glory and honor, and that we would seek after you in all things. Lord, we ask that you would be with this nation and world we pray for an end of COVID-19. We pray for an end of any illness, of cancer or mental illness or anything that might uh, besiege us. We pray, God, that you would relieve it and that you would heal us. God, we pray for your peace to come upon this earth in a new and mighty way. We pray it in the name of Christ. Amen. So I want to join you and invite you this Sunday evening, uh, November 22nd at 6 p.m. Uh, here on Facebook or YouTube, whichever place you're viewing this. Um, I want to encourage you to gather for it. We will be having a Thanksgiving worship service, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. You won't just see my face, so there's a big amen in that. Uh, but there will be some other folks on here, and I really want to encourage you. We're not going to make it a long, drawn-out affair, but I really encourage you to join on 6 o'clock on Facebook and 6.15 on YouTube. So please join us this Sunday evening at uh, those times. And I can't wait to meet with you then. I can't wait to see you all on Sunday morning, uh, virtual or in person, however it might be. But I just pray that God's blessing will be upon you as we go through uh, this still very young week.